So a colleague was asking if I had any advice for a visit with a new endocrinologist. Well, there's a couple of things. First, let's just take a step back and let's talk about the kinds of doctors that maybe we can work with on these issues when we have thyroid problems. Seems obvious, thyroid's an endocrine gland. We go to an endocrinologist, but it's actually not that simple. One, because our problem isn't really the thyroid. I mean, maybe it is if we have thyroid cancer or something like that, but if you have Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, the problem is just manifesting your thyroid. The problem's really your immune system. It could have easily been type one diabetes, which manifests in your pancreas, or multiple sclerosis in the brain, or rheumatoid arthritis in the joints, or celiac in the gut. All of these are autoimmune conditions. So is an endocrinologist really gonna know? Well, the fact is Western medicine is all about reduction. Oh, you have an eye problem, go to an eye doctor. You have a throat problem, go to a throat doctor. You have an elbow problem. You know, you get my point. But we have an autoimmune condition. It's a systemic problem. You go to talk to an endocrinologist and say, gee, should I change my diet? Does it have anything to do with my liver and my gut? And they'll look at you like you're insane. Except the thyroid hormone that your thyroid makes is converted to a useful form of the liver and the gut. Of course the liver and gut has something to do with it. But most endocrinologists either don't know, don't care, don't talk about it. I don't know. So the issue is, I'm honestly, and, and I can't tell you, you know, I'm gonna tell people what to do. Some people are fantastic endocrinologists. I fired at least seven. And the most recent one was the worst. This young woman, she herself on Hashimoto's. Part of me wants to go back in like five years and be like, okay, sister, how that advice work for you? Because <laughs> it didn't work for me. That's another story. So uh, I'm a little skeptical of endocrinologists because I think the more specialized your doctor becomes, the more arrogant they often become. But there are some people of great endocrinologists. Hey folks, if you do, leave the name and where they are, the state or country they're in, in the comments. Maybe what we should do is start a list of actually good doctors. Okay, so what do we do if we're going to the doctor, whether it's an endocrinologist or a general practitioner or whatever? We need a full thyroid panel. You're probably gonna have to fight for that. You're gonna ask for TSH, T4, sorry, TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, and thyroid antibodies. I have another video on that as well. So you want a full thyroid panel, you probably will have to argue with them. Then when the results come back, you need to talk about optimal thyroid lab ranges, optimal thyroid lab numbers, not the reference ranges. The lab range is like this big. The lab range is anything from 0.5 to 4.5. And here's my new analogy. I'm always working out better ways to think of this. That's like saying the height range in my family is from 4.9 to 6.3, which is what it is. So if we just get clothing for the six for 6.3, that's fine, okay? all of us, right? Except I'm 5.3. We don't all exist in that range. We each are healthy or have the right fitting clothes at one point in that range. To say the truth, I feel best when my TSH is about 0.28. Some doctors call that hyper, but I don't have any hyper symptoms. The most important thing I ask, the most important thing of advice, how do you go? You go educated. You go with your own questions, you go with your own knowledge, and don't let the doctor gaslight you. This is your life, your body, and your symptoms.